A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive. This one is part three, disconnecting the other boiler fittings in order to remove the cab and side tanks. I think I'll start by removing the rear cab supports. These vertical columns are anchored at the foot plate and at the top. This decision proved to be a bit of a mistake because after removing these two support columns, I managed to bang my head not once but twice on the exposed corner of the cab once I'd removed these columns. Thankfully it wasn't serious and there was no blood involved. These two support columns are anchored at the foot plate end by Allen cab head bolts and here I'm removing the second one. There's nothing difficult here, they weren't very tight and in no time at all they were in the green plastic box. As I start to dismantle this locomotive and look at it more closely, I'm seeing something that is very common. I think that by the time the builder, assuming it was the same builder who started the engine, got to this stage, I really get the impression that he'd had enough of the job. Look at the angle bracket that supports the footplate, it's nicely rounded. And now look at the footplate, apart from it being a bit short, it's just square and quite sharp. One thing that's bothering me is the very cheap fixings that have been used. I always buy machined nuts and bolts from Blackgate's Engineering and I never have any problem with them. But these bolts are cheap and cheerful mass-produced items. And what makes it worse is they've been over-tightened, so it's quite difficult to get all the bolts out cleanly. The threads on the nuts are often distorted by being over-tightened and I have to keep the spanner on the nuts all the way to the end of the thread of the bolt. Today I went over to West Yorkshire where Blackgate's Engineering is and I bought some proper 2BA and 4BA nuts and bolts. These will be used when I finally reassemble the engine after the boiler problem's sorted out. When the boiler's finally off the frames, I'll be able to get at the mechanical parts, which also need some attention. The slide valve timing is definitely not right on this engine. This won't be a difficult job, though, once I've got rid of the boiler. I might even be able to lift the chassis by myself. Currently, I'm removing the pipework from one of the lubricator boxes. This one supplies oil to the axle boxes at one side. There's a matching one on the other side tank. The piping is a bit of a mess on this engine, and also the pipe fittings are not very tight. Well, most of them anyway. The parts that are tight are the fixing bolts. Most of these pipe fittings are commercial parts that you can buy at a plumber's merchant's. I have a box full of them. Now comes the difficult part, so I'm speeding up the video to eight times normal speed. Believe it or not, a very simple job like removing three 2BA bolts that hold the tank in place took quite a long time. Every one of the bolts was over tightened and the threads were damaged, so as I mentioned earlier, the spanner had to be kept on each of the nuts right to the end of the travel. To be honest, it was a real pain. You can just about see what I'm doing. At the cab end of the engine, the nuts and bolts were not quite so damaged, so this was slightly easier, but once again as you can see, I had to keep the spanner on almost to the end of the travel. That's one side tank removed, and it wasn't an easy job, and there's still the other side tank to remove, which is quite difficult to get to. I'm leaving the boiler cladding for now, I'll remove that in the next episode. As a bit of an interlude, I thought it was time to remove the nuts from the bolts that hold the cab, and once again, every one of these had been radically over-tightened, so the threads were damaged, and once again, they were a pain to remove, but I got there in the end. Now I'm round the other side of the engine, and I've disconnected the piping from the side tank. Before continuing, I wanted to remove the check valves. This is the check valve on the other side, where I've removed the tank. I wondered why the check valves were built like this, with the inlet to the boiler part at an angle. It became obvious that they were made this way so you could unscrew them without fouling the side tanks, or the saddle tank, whichever variant was going to be used. This is round the other side, and even the union nuts are over-tightened on these. I had to spanner it once again all the way off. And here you see why they are angled. If this fitting was built at 90 degrees, it would foul the tank. And it would not be a good idea if you needed to change the check valve to have to take the tanks off. Time to release the pipes from the oil box. Once again, these were tight too. But eventually, thanks to the video running at eight times normal speed, the spannering didn't take very long. 
Working on this side of the engine is quite difficult because I can't show what I'm doing. I'm in the way. In this clip I'm trying to remove the cab, but there's no chance. This is the best shot that I could get, it's the back of my fleecy jacket. This is a better shot and you can see that the cab is still attached. That's because the cutout in the spectacle plate does not clear the weld where the firebox meets the barrel. I will have to remove the cladding so I can slide the cab forward slightly before lifting it off. That's in the next episode though, I've put both of the side tanks in a safe place, in a cardboard box with some padding at the bottom, in a corner of the workshop. And that is it for this episode, my bad back will take no more punishment for today. One has to suffer for one's heart darling, and that's all I'm saying on the subject. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.